Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee. This is our, our third committee, and I declare the meeting open. I note that all members are present. We have no apologies. Do we have any interest to declare in relation to today's agenda? No? Moving along to uh, item one on the agenda, which is the contract variation for the CBD retail refurbishment works. It's a report concerning a proposed variation to an existing contract with uh, J. Hutchinson Proprietary Limited for the provision of re retail development works associated with the retail component of the Nicholas Street project. Could I call on the relevant council? Officer, thank you. <coughs> Good morning, Sean Madigan, General Manager of Coordination and Performance. Uh, through the Chair, uh, the background uh, to this report is the uh, principal contractor for the construction of the Ipswich Central Redevelopment is Hutchinson Builders, uh, who were awarded a, a contract following a competitive tender process some years ago uh, and have progressed with the construction of those works. Uh, we have since, uh, as a result of, of investigations and a decision of uh, the interim administrator at the time, uh, determined to proceed uh, with uh, the development of the retail assets within that precinct. Uh, in December of 2019, a report was provided uh, to the interim administrator in his capacity as council, uh, <clears throat> which was a tender consideration plan to award the contract variation to Hutchinson Builders to deliver the retail works uh, as a contract variation of the original contract that was left with them for the major construction. Uh, the tender consideration plan took into account value for money uh, and the effectiveness of having the one principal contract to delivering all of those works and, and it was determined at the time that it was an appropriate decision uh, for council to make uh, to award a contract variation to Hutchinson Builders. That decision was made in 2019 under an uh, interim administrator. Um, the project has obviously progressed significantly um, to the point where we are hoping within the next two weeks to finalise an agreement for lease uh, with our major anchor tenant uh, being a cinema operator in the precinct. Um, and we thought it, it prudent to present uh, this uh, recommendation to Council uh, to award the contract variation uh, to Hutchinson Builders and to authorise the CEO to negotiate and administer and finalise the, the terms of that contract variation uh, subject to uh, the actual execution of an agreement for lease uh, with our, our anchor tenant being the cinema operator. Uh, it is a significant amount of money as you'll see there. It, it is in the recommendation a total of 30 $3,614,627, so not an insignificant uh, amount of, of funds for Council to expend. Um, however, uh, based upon the endorsement uh, of this Council uh, for our retail development strategy some months ago, I think in one of the first committees uh, of this particular standing committee of Council, uh, we've brought this before Council to contemplate the matter um, and uh, to hopefully endorse the recommendation and provide the CEO uh, with the ability to proceed with this once we secure the contractually binding agreement for lease. Do we have any questions? Mr Madigan? So through, the, through the Chair, just, just confirming because there's a lot of paperwork here, um, Mr Madigan, <coughs> that we're looking at this contract variation, just looking at the retail precinct? That is correct. Yes, yes. So this is aside from the construction of the library, administration building and civic space. So this relates to the retail assets which we refer to as Venue Eats uh, Metro B and the facade of Metro A, um, which we, you know, was in accordance with the endorsed uh, retail development strategy of Council. Was it always planned there'd be a contract variation? It was it's contemplated in, in the original contract with Hutchinson. Um, it, it was included as an option for a contract variation there. Um, and 
following uh, sort of legal advice and advice from our internal procurement, um, we went down the path of a tender consideration plan. Um, legally arguable as to whether or not that was required, given the fact that the original contract that was let with Huntington provided that. Um, but the tender consideration plan was done in order to demonstrate that we are achieving value for money for the people of Ipswich by a contract variation. Um, Do you mind outlining what the risk would be if, if the council were to proceed with this yeah. and, and not to proceed? Yep, certainly. <coughs> um, you know, I make no bones about the, the risks associated with the investment in this retail strategy. Um, you know, you have what is effectively an unproven retail precinct that's been in decline for, for many years within the Ipswich Central CBD, which most people, or all people in Ipswich, would be very aware of. Um, so <clears throat> we, we are under um, significant pressure overlaid with COVID and the circumstances surrounding that and the... the um, economic climate that that has created in the retail sector. So, um, look, there there is risk in us um, in this investment uh, in terms of ultimately achieving Council's ultimate goal of uh, return on investment, you know, in the retail precinct. We can achieve that if the retail precinct is successful. Um, so that, that is a significant risk. We have many um, mitigation strategies in place um, around that. So the, the construction risk is low. The success of the precinct is the important part. Um, we have the on this agenda the Retail Steering Committee uh, report as well from Mr James Hepburn. Um, and the, the critical point um, around this is securing an anchor tenant um, that will provide the foot traffic uh, that will support the actual precinct. Um, there are many other leases and agreements for leases that are holding off us securing that anchor tenant. Um, so that is why this recommendation is contingent upon us securing that contractually binding agreement for lease. So we are, we are mitigating uh, that risk by saying that we will not execute the contract variation with Hutchins and Builders until we secure uh, that key anchor tenant to the precinct. And that's following advice from KPMG uh, and our retail uh, st steering committee. The risks of not proceeding with it is that um, effectively you have what is, has become in many ways a derelict uh, Ipswich central area that was the former mall. You no longer have um, the, the supermarket that was there as a result of the, the civic space and the like. Uh, all of these buildings with the exception of one tenant are empty, uh, so we are not achieving any income for them. The KPMG review that was conducted and is publicly available was where we, we looked at our return on investment, we looked at the opportunity of divesting it to another investor to develop a, and prove it as a success. And there is limited interest in the market to actually do that. So I would argue, based upon the expert advice that we have received, that if council does not invest in these retail assets, invest in the activation and events to make them a success, um, that there is unlikely that any other organisation or institution would do so. Um, and that is the significant risk. Uh, this council made a decision many years ago to purchase those assets. Um, and I, I think that the, the path that we are going down and the expert advice that, that we have received um, would indicate that it is in the interest of the city to proceed with this retail development, um, albeit you know, being fully aware of the risks that are associated with <coughs> investing you know, a significant portion of funds into those retail assets uh, in what is an unproven retail market and complicated further by COVID. Thank you, Ms. Madigan. Mr Madigan, given um, uh, two material, um, I guess, occurrences this year being um, COVID and um, a recession, is there any merit or thought gone into pausing, so not proceeding with the variation, and I understand the um, consequences of not being able to then secure an anchor tenant, but pausing once we complete the construction of our administration building and the civic space, um, potentially delaying, not long term, but, mm. but for a year or two. Um, mm. Are we not able to, um, guess, activate the administration building and civic spaces in our libraries enough to see us moving forward for a couple of years before we move to the retail strategy? Um, I, I Good and complicated question. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, in a short answer, I guess, is we will activate 
the spaces that we have delivered through our administration building, through our library and through our civic space. Um, but obviously one of the key things to any form of activation is it has to be a nice place to go. Mm -hmm. um, and not just to be, but to go. So the journey through and the like. So you need a destination. You need, you know, all of these things are actually complementary to each other. Um, and if we were to invest in, in the civic space and the library um, and not invest in the, the retail assets, it would be activated to a, a certain extent, but not to the extent that I think that the significant investment we were making in those civic spaces and library um, warrants you know, that. I don't, I don't think we would say that they were a resounding success um, on the back of that. It is a fairly dismal, um, you know, even with the Nicholas Street refurbishment that you see, when you walk down those old buildings and those old facades, um, it is a pretty dreary sort of mm -hmm. a location still. Um, if we present that to the, the people of Ipswich, uh, I don't think realistically that it is a place that people will want to come and spend time with their families. Um, the other aspect is there is very limited in that precinct, aside from top of town, food and beverage offerings um, within that Ipswich Central precinct. So, um, so if you want people to come stay and, and play, as we say, in, in our city, mm. um, we need to create a destination that the city is proud of and wants to spend time in. Uh, I think that if you don't invest in the, the retail assets and, you know, um, at least, you know, making them, them more appear, you know, sort of more friendly, family friendly, safer, um, that we would be criticised as an organisation for creating this beautiful civic space and library um, and a determination that, you know, not to invest in that and leave it run down as it is. Um, bearing in mind, even when we make this decision, um, there are some optimal times around the opening of retail precincts, um, as we've been advised by Mr James Hepburn. Um, we are op aiming for an opening of September of next year um, for our actual retail assets. Uh, that is a significant time away and, and you know, we don't know what is going to happen between now and then in, in terms of vaccines and the like for COVID. There was a big announcement obviously from the Prime Minister yesterday regarding the potential to be rolling out uh, a COVID, COVID vaccine early next year. Um, so we are certainly hoping that, that we will overcome or, or the delay in construction and the fit out times will actually enable the country to get past the, the worst risk posed by, by COVID at this time. Mm -hmm. Further to that, I, I should say that within the retail market there is still an interest to come to our precinct. So we have eight heads of agreements um, that have been signed off with, with a variety of, of different um, food and beverage and entertainment offerings. Uh, none of those organisations have sought to cancel those heads of agreement. Uh, so they are still interested in coming to the precinct. They do see the, the commercial viability of it, and, um, probably due to the lack of, of alternatives mm. within the Ipswich Central uh, area and precinct. Uh, what they are doing, however, is, is with the constrained economic climate you're finding from COVID, looking for additional, perhaps, leasing incentives um, to actually come into the precinct through whether it's capital uh, investment uh, or rent abatement. Um, so what, what that tells me is... You know, these businesses, they know what they're doing. They know the retail market. They know what it will and won't support. Um, the work that we have done through Urbis and others over the years, um, you know, there is a need for this in the city. So this isn't, um, you know, a purely commercial decision for council. There, there is a desire from the community to come back into our CBD, to be proud of it again, um, and to invest, <coughs> you know, circa... You know, $200 million into a beautiful administration building, civic space and a fantastic library um, and leave the, the surrounding buildings derelict effectively um, would not, you know, <coughs> I think meet the expectations of the community and what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and we have had the independent quantity surveyor report to confirm that the variation, the contract is value for money. That's correct, yeah. RLB are our quantity surveyors throughout the project. Um, so every claim <coughs> um, that is received uh, from Hutchinson Builders and every contract is reviewed by them to ensure that it is in fact consistent with what would be you know, market value uh, for the provision of, of those services. So mm -hmm. they, they do detailed work on that. Uh, and that is one of the factors, certainly, that was contemplated in the preparation and adoption of the tender consideration plan uh, in terms of demonstrating to the community that we're achieving value for money. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr Madigan? Thank you. Thank you. 
now open for discussion. Does anyone have any? Second of sorry, something. Sorry. Can I ask somebody to move? Thank you, Mayor. Seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. Now open up for discussion. Anyone, anyone have any comments, questions, concerns? No. Chair, I'm just sorry. I'm, I'm just very excited to see yes. <laughs> this this progress to to occur, and um, the sooner this work gets done, the sooner hopefully we get some tenants and. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And, and you know, I, I do note that this variation, an extra spend of 30-odd million will um, raise some concerns, but um, I agree with Mr Madigan's view that um, the top part of Nicholas Street is almost our gateway to the newly, almost newly finished, beautiful civic spaces, and um, I think it would jeopardise the success of them if we don't move forward. I agree. Uh, to the Chair, I think the... Former interim administrator. I mean, this is that they sort of had planned to do, and mm -hmm. I guess uh, I'm not a property developer, nor have I done any any of that type of stuff or done anything on this scale in in a, in a retail mm. or shopping area. So I do rely heavily on on the experts mm -hmm. in, in this field on, on the best way to to spend the money, residents' money. Yeah. In, in opening this up. Absolutely, I agree. It was always um, part of the plan and, and part of, you know, within the advices of, of the professional advisors to council. I was just a little conscious of the additional overlays this year with, you know, COVID and um, uh, an official recession. So, um, but I, you know, agree with um, Mr Madigan and have confidence that they've assessed and reassessed. Okay. Yeah, so just through the chair, yes. um, whilst the, the risks are high, um, the robust <coughs> recommendations um, speak for themselves, basically. Mm. So I agree with Mr Madigan. And, and, and through the chair, I think Councillor Johnick, the risk of not doing anything is even higher. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, to be looking at um, how we're spending ratepayers' money. Yeah. And through the chair, and how can we measure that? Um, as well so uh, it, the whole precinct will um, be a destination and, and tell a story and the people that we want to um, to come to our civic space um, you know will be there to spend time if the services uh, and the businesses are there to provide that mm. so yeah we need to move forward on this in my opinion to the chair yes can't lose the vision. Can't lose the vision. Can't lose the vision. I'm supporting it. Should we put it to the vote? We have. I confirm we have five votes in the affirmative. The motion is carried. Now, if we move to the second item on our agenda, which is the Ipswich Central Executive Report number 18, dated the 3rd of August 2020, uh, which is an update on the Ipswich Central program of works. Could I ask the relevant council officer to come forward? Thank you, Chair. Um, so this is the uh, regular monthly reporting that we provide uh, to Council and the community in relation to the Ipswich Central uh, Redevelopment Project. Uh, at a, a very high level, um, the project is, is progressing, uh, I would say, exceptionally well uh, at this stage. So the construction uh, timeframes, uh, we have reached practical completion on our new library. Uh, what that means effectively is that Hutchinson Builders have finished their component of it uh, and now we move into the furniture uh, fittings and equipment uh, stage of that particular project. So our libraries team are working quite furiously at the moment, um, preparing a transition uh, of services from the existing library into the new library. So they are, are, are heavily involved in the details around the what is referred to as FF&E. Um, to make sure that we are ready to, to transition our library services from the existing facility uh, in this precinct uh, down to the, the new library. 
the civic space uh, is also uh, reaching practical completion and will be uh, this month will be signed off uh, from Hutchinson Builders as well. Uh, that does not mean that it is, is complete and, and ready to be opened, it just means that the scope within Hutchinson Builders contract uh, has been reached. Uh, there are defect periods, there is public art that has to be installed, there's a variety of other aspects that form part of the, the, the project uh, to complete. Having said that, um, we are turning our minds and, and we will be discussing it uh, I would suggest uh, at the next uh, round of committee as to when the opening uh, of those facilities uh, will occur. Um, there is a conversation, does the library and civic space, you know, do you have a grand opening for that? How does that look in a COVID world? All of those complications, but it's certainly a decision for this council to make. Um, so from a construction perspective, all of those aspects will voluntarily be complete and will be we believe based on operational requirements, particularly for the library, in a position to open in November. Um, but uh, we will present a report to the next round of committee with a detailed schedule to be actually contemplated about how that looks and feels. Uh, the car park uh, as well, um, in terms of Hutchinson Builders' original scope, uh, has reached practical completion as well, so there's signage and, and painting down there. Following comments uh, and discussion, uh, particularly with the Divisional Council and the Council Law and the Chair of this committee, um, we are in the, the process of looking at lighting upgrades uh, to the car park beyond what was there uh, at the time. So as, as Hutchinson's scope was a replacement uh, and repair of lights uh, that were existing, uh, we're now conducting a bit of an analysis of that with a view to in installing additional lighting um, based upon on the feedback, as I said, from the Divisional Council and the Chair of this committee. Uh, to ensure that, yet again, it is a safe destination uh, it is an access point uh, by which people will come to our library and our precinct. Um, so it is important that the negative connotations uh, associated and experiences associated with that car park over the last few years are a thing of the past. Um, in addition to that, I will mention we are also meeting um, with Council's Safe City team tomorrow to actually look at a safety and security plan for the entire precinct. Uh, yet again with the Chair and, and other Divisional Councillor um, to ensure yet again that it is a safe place that our community wants to spend time. The administration building um, is progressing extremely well, uh, so it is ahead of the, the proposed schedule. Um, one of the early schedules we had was that we would be moving into that facility in approximately August uh, of next year. Uh, it is now looking more than likely that we'll be looking at a staged uh, transition from these assets into that one uh, of approximately June next year. Uh, that is, is how far ahead of schedule Hutchinson builders are uh, with that. Um, in terms of, a, from a budgetary perspective, um, we are tracking in, in accordance with the approved uh, budget of council. Um, there is a contingency fund um, that is a standard fund to have attached to any construction project, so all council Projects generally have a contingency fund. Um, we are tracking at this stage to be, be approximately three to four million dollars under the approved budget of that contingency for the project. However, there are a number of discretionary items that we are considering at the moment which will impact uh, the final position on that, such as additional lighting in the car park um, and other aspects of the development. Um, in terms of the construction uh, and the risks associated with it, um, I am confident to say that we are certainly past some of the, the riskiest stages uh, of the actual construction of the project. We have been lucky enough that the COVID overlay hasn't been significant in terms of delaying the, the construction of, of those projects. Um, so that is, is being managed you know, effectively. Um, Commonwealth Hotel, so we are expecting to uh, let the contract uh, for that, I'm hoping, Certainly this month uh, is the intent and commence the reconstruction of that Commonwealth Hotel which is a, a significant uh, historical aspect you know, of, of our CBD. Do we have any questions for Mr Madigan? <laughs> Mayor Harding? Uh, Deputy Mayor, if I could, may. Mr Madigan, thank you for the, re the reporting. I know just sort of... Um, let residents know that obviously we're, we're usually in pretty regular contact yeah. with, with yourself and with the deputy yeah. mayor leading this to to manage things. Um, I sort of draw your attention to page 62 
of the report. And you've got the, I'm just looking at risk. There are 31 risks at, at the high level. And I can see, I guess, four of them just underneath with the main risks. Do you mind taking us through what's being done and, and when do you think these risks will be completely mitigated or, or not and how we're actually approaching risk in these areas? Yeah, certainly. Um, <clears throat> so the, if we work through the, the four uh, main risks, um, so um, just explaining for everyone, the, we do maintain that, that risk register and, and constantly update it. Mm -hmm. um, the Ipswich Central project is the risk of COVID impact on, on supply chain, um, looking at the, the library equipment. Um, so there is, there is no, as such, specific uh, indication um, based upon the conversation I had with Matt Pascoe and our libraries team yesterday, who is leading uh, effectively the FF&E, that they're expecting any significant uh, risks there. Uh, it was just flagged, I think, early that it could be a potential risk. Okay. Um, the feedback that I've received from Matt is that mid-November, which is what we are scheduled, is what they are proposing to be, uh, you know, completed by. So it doesn't have a high likelihood. That's exactly so. right, yeah, that's it. Um, the, the challenge you have, though, is, is in a COVID world, how do you genuinely, from a risk management perspective, mitigate that to say it's a low risk? Um, because, you know, you, if, if a particular item is coming from a particular place uh, and it becomes a hotspot or an outbreak you know, anywhere in the world, then that potentially could impact the delivery of it. So I think there's, there's only so much you can do to, to mitigate, unfortunately, that COVID risk. Second one on project contingency. <clears throat> yeah. Um, this is, is what is I... A risk or an issue? <laughs> um, depending on how you look at it. Um, so this, obviously, risk assessment is developed up by our project management team, you know, in the, the pure sense of project management. Um, and, you know, when we talk about elective variations, um, you know, we are talking about the sort of things that I spoke about, additional lighting... Um, you know, any sort of redesign with the administration building, you know, and the like. Um, but, you know, they're, they're the, the project managers and they're very risk averse. Um, my projections from the project team are that we are going to be three to four million dollars underspent uh, when it comes to our contingency fund. Um, uh, and I think this is their way of highlighting to us that we should still be prudent when it comes to elective variations you know, that we, it's not necessarily money that you spend for the sake of spending, that if you can get to the end of your project, um, you know, and significantly underspent, that we can then invest that money into other uh, council projects, then that is obviously not, not a bad thing. They also want to talk about uh, unforeseen issues. Um, you know, from my perspective, you have a civic space that, that has reached practical completion. You have a car park, effectively, that has reached practical completion. You have a library that's reached practical completion. You have an administration building that has had a topping out ceremony um, and is coming into effectively internal fit out of walls and lights and <coughs> the like. So, you know, in terms of unforeseen issues, uh, the, the biggest risk you face on a project of this nature is probably when you're starting off, you know, when you're starting off full construction and foundations and the like when, it, when it's a brownfield site, particularly like this. Um, you know, I think we're, we're significantly through the worst of that risk um, and... Um, you know, they have that uh, as high, but I think that's them being particularly cautious and reminding us of the importance of our decision making. Um, risk of COVID-19 shutdown uh, of site work. Um, I think that really ties in, in many ways, with the conversation before that if it is a cluster or a big outbreak, or you know, a an employee of Hutchinson Builders or a contractor tests positive to COVID, then you'd have a potential shutdown and deep clean and, and all the processes, but yet again would be you know, guided by the Chief Health Officer's advice when it comes to that. It would be good, I guess, noting the, the news today that we do have a case mm. in, in Ipswich, you know, to let Hutchies know to just make sure that, you know, and, and the contractors, that they do follow all the mitigation strategies. Yes, yeah, and we'll remind that. I, I will say that Hutchies have done a very good job um, from the you know, initial outbreak of COVID. Um, so they have invested significant funds in providing a COVID safe workplace you know, for their employees um, through the, uh, the you know, additional meal rooms and breakouts and cleanliness on the site. Um, but we will remind them yet again you know, of the additional risk posed now that we have a confirmed case in, in Ipswich. The final significant risk there um, <clears throat> is uh, 
more so around program. Um, if you actually read the, the risk there, it isn't necessarily about a cinema not signing, um, but it is about a cinema not signing in time for us to, to meet our program for the construction of the retail works. Um, one of the, the significant mitigation measures for that uh, was item one uh, on the agenda for this committee, which was in fact get this council's approval or seek the council's approval for the contract variation to Hutchies pending the execution of that agreement for lease with the cinema. What this now means is that uh, that when we have a an executed agreement for lease uh, with the cinema, which I, as I said I am expecting will be actually this month in August, the CEO is then now following council meeting on Tuesday, an endorsement of that, authorised to execute the variation to Hutchies and they can swing into work. Um, the delays, uh, then I know the public have, have commented on this around the execution of the cinema lease, uh, has predominantly been as a result of COVID-19. So uh, we all know that, that cinemas for, for an extensive period there across the country were closed down as a result of COVID and um, they, they, as a business, ha had greater priorities than actually executing this agreement um, with us. They have now fully turned their minds to this and we're at the stage where an agreement is doing the final, if you will, twos and fro's between their lawyers and our lawyers in terms of terms and conditions. Um, so it is progressing well. If I may, Deputy yes. Mayor. <laughs> I note on, on page 74 of 99, um, we're looking at um, internal engagement and marketing. There's a note there that that um, the mayor and council uh, to get a weekly social media toll. We could just, I think we need to continue that so we can put that out on our channels. Certainly. And, and also just probably one correction there: 5.3 community engagement on the 7th of August, Ipswich Leaders Alliance site visit that was booked in. We're about to go, and then the, the heavens opened up, oh, okay. <laughs> and we weren't able to go up there. So just for the record, if you want to um, say that that was that, postponed, we're still still to organise. Um, Mr Madigan, I just have a couple of uh, questions. Um, firstly, in relation to the lighting review, can I understand a bit more in detail what's proposed there? I've just had feedback from a couple of um, employees of, of tenants there in Nicholas Street um, and they've identified the certain sections of the car park that they just will not park in, they are way too dark and they don't feel safe. So can I just understand a little more around on... Yeah, certainly. So from, from a lighting perspective, in public areas, which a car park is, there, there is a, um, if you will, a standard of what they call lux, you know, that is, is sort of preferred, um, you know, by the, the standards. So um, <clears throat> that is definitely not being achieved in certain areas within the council, uh, car park, sorry, not all areas. Um, so what we are looking at doing is adding additional lighting into those areas to achieve it um, across the entire car park rather than just the, the main areas. Um, it's actually from a construction perspective. So we contemplated this early on in, in the project um, <clears throat> and made a decision at that time just to defer uh, doing those works initially until we completed the car park with the cleaning and painting and see what actually effect th that you have as a result of that. Now that that has been done, we have determined that it does require additional lighting following, as you said, community feedback and consultation with yourself, Chair. Um, being a car park, it's actually very easy to do, you know, because at the end of the day, it's conduit and light that runs along your, your concrete. <coughs> so you're not pulling things out or any of that sort of stuff, it's just running. And effectively, a, a sparky comes in and, you know, puts a new light in um, and, and runs the lead. So it isn't a, a significant cost. I mean, it's, it's not insignificant, um, mm -hmm. as, as uh, nothing is with construction. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, we believe, critical to the success of the precinct that it yeah. is safe. Okay. Um, so that's where we're at. Um, and, and can I ask, uh, in relation to the existing ramp, mm. um, again, feedback from the community is that it is an eyesore, harks back to the past, of, of that, um, of the old mall days. Mm. Can I get an understanding of what potentially we can do there? I've also had an additional inquiry about potentially um, can cyclists use that ramp as an access point to the civic space? Mm. I understand we have lift that is bicycle friendly mm. uh, for people coming off um, the, the footbridge from Riverlink. Mm. Um, however, is this a, an additional option or is, is it something we can investigate? It is probably not realistically, um, and I'm speaking on behalf of Transport 
planners and engineers mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, the, the reason being is, is one of the main uh, drivers of the ramps for remaining was to provide uh, heavy vehicle access, so garbage trucks and um, the rest of it that are required to actually maintain a, a precinct of that nature um, to the back of house of, of the civic precinct. Um, so it is, it is not ideal from a safety point of view. Um, you know, in, in order to provide cycle access, you have to have certain meterage and, and markings mm. and the like. Mm. What we have done for cyclists um, is um, <clears throat> to provide additional access from what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was more so around um, disability compliance. Mm -hmm. So there is a ramp being put in um, from Bremer Street uh, through to B4. Um, of the, the car park, which provides pretty much easy access to the, the central precinct. Okay. So you will be able to, from <coughs> the street, go punch sort of straight through the, the existing walls that are there, it'll be, <coughs> and be into the, the precinct much easier. Um, Excellent. So yeah. there'll be wayfinding, lighting and... and all, all of that sort of stuff, yeah. So that includes not just cyclists, but obviously wheelchair access and, and scooters and the like. Um, that was identified by our infrastructure and environment uh, engineers mm -hmm. you know, in terms of optimising Bremer Street. So we're, that's that aspect. Um, the other aspect obviously is, is beautifying, if you will, um, the, uh, as you said, the appearance of the ramps, you know, and the, the wall when you look at it from Bremer Street. Mm -hmm. um, so options uh, that we can contemplate uh, around that <coughs> are obviously, you know, just the simple painting uh, you know, all those assets, um, that, that is one option. Um, murals are another example that have been utilised elsewhere. If you look in at Brisbane, um, <coughs> on along, along Cor Coronation Drive and the like, they, they put murals underneath uh, mm -hmm. their assets there. Um, you have options such as hanging gardens uh, and that sort of stuff that potentially you could look at uh, through there, constructing those to hang off uh, the ramps. That is actually all being contemplated at the moment um, and um, to be determined um, by the, the council is, um, you know, we will liaise with the chair and the council as to what that might look like and the community as well. Mm -hmm. So um, you're not looking at a costly solution there, um, you know, at the end of the day, if it's a bit of paint or whatever it may be. Um, it will not resolve it completely, no. um, you know, at the end of the day, they aren't a particularly good looking asset. Um, there is consideration as to what we do with those ramps longer term though, which would tie in with our infrastructure department's works on Bremer Street. Yes. So there is an ultimate goal mm -hmm. for Bremer Street to resolve some of the traffic issues and the like. Uh, I don't believe it's in a capital works program uh, for the next 10 years. Um, but it is something that, that is being contemplated by our infrastructure team. Okay. And that may involve a solution around the, the ramps generally and the traffic lights there as well and the access to the, the river on the other side. And just in relation to the ramp you mentioned off Bremer Street <coughs> through to uh, is it B4 of the mm. car park, yes. can you just uh, in due course get some further information from you around that our avid city cyclists will be um, no doubt asking for that information this afternoon after hearing, yeah. Certainly, Council. So we, we can actually distribute that this afternoon with mm -hmm. some schematic drawings about what's intended. It's not detailed as yet. Yeah. And it was only just signed off on um, last two weeks. Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, and as I said, yet again, driven by predominantly DDA mm. compliance to mm -hmm. make sure that it is accessible to all members of our community. Okay. Um, and finally, um, the Commonwealth Hotel. <coughs> I continue to um, receive... Um, Field questions, I guess, and concerns from within the community regarding the demolition works that occurred and the stabilising of that building. Um, is it possible that we get a report from you guys? I'm just conscious that we, we have two different um, contractors, one attended to the demolition and, and stabilising. We're engaging the services of a, a separate contractor to do the new construction side of things. I would just like to understand um, with regard to, I guess, who's on the hook mm -hmm. for the stabilisation and the foundations of the building. Uh, who's on the hook um, between the two contractors and, I guess, council to see if there is any exposure or risk for Ipswich City Council? Certainly, Chair. So would you like... That provided to the next council yeah, committee that, meeting? That, that would be Certainly. appropriate, yes. Yeah. Like I said, just want to understand the relationship between the, the contractors and council and, and who 
if there is an exposure or a risk there, um, who is responsible or on the hook for that? Yeah, certainly. So we can prepare a report that, that covers off on that chair <coughs> um, and then also talking about the, the engineering specifications and sign-off. Yeah, we'd way, like which to, covers yeah, off who ultimately of signed off mm. on that and, and um, I guess who, um, who council um, could fall back to if there is a problem. Um, you know, understandably, it's a big piece of work. It's a very costly piece of work. So um, residents wouldn't be very happy if, upon completion, there was ongoing foundation problems. So, thank you. Any further questions for Mr. Madigan? No, thank you. Chair. Can I call on um, ask somebody to move this report? Thank you, Councillor Jonick. And a seconder, Councillor Milligan, thank you. Open up for discussion, further discussion. I guess, you mean, I, I note the point that you just made, that who was responsible. Mm -hmm. We are spending around that $6 million mm. mark, so thank you for raising that, yeah, look that, at that point. And I look at the, um, I think, page 72 of, of the report, attachment one, um, 3.5, look at the AV project and just oh. note um, the importance of, of having that the AV you know really pumping I think in the, in the precinct and the importance of it based on the of the advice from the experts and I guess that may look into future what we're looking at lighting and, and things like that as well to look at what's what's best case to attract as many people as many shoppers and, and many Absolutely. people to, to the CBD um, I'm sure there'll be people within the community who um, may not necessarily like you know, an AV or the, the large digital screens, but um, I, I don't think there is a shopping centre these days um, or a retail space that doesn't have one of these large digital screens. And you know, certainly if we can explore the opportunities to um, potentially gain some income for council yeah. via marketing um, from third parties, hopefully it might pay for itself. <laughs> I think it'd be good for uh, for the entertainment value, mm -hmm. but I also, you know, we've discussed this that, that we've had some businesses since the the Queensland Times is not doing a print edition. Yeah. We've certainly had a number of businesses approach us. The fact that they have uh, finding enough ways to market their products, mm -hmm. and so this could be a potential option for them to market their products as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Help them through the chair. It's um, the possibilities are endless with this <laughs> asset. So, okay, yeah. Should we put it to the vote? All those in favour? <laughs> Five in the affirmative. Motion is carried. We move on to agenda item number three, which is the Retail Subproject Steering Committee. It's a report concerning the formation of the Retail Subproject Steering Committee and the status of the leasing program for the retail component of the redevelopment. Can I call on the relevant Council officer. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Um, this uh, report uh, effectively is, is the first report from the Retail Subproject Steering Committee through to this standing uh, committee of Council. Uh, the Retail Subproject Steering Committee um, was identified uh, by the uh, Interim Administrator uh, some time ago that in the business of Council operating, um, sorry, developing and operating a retail precinct is not the, the core business uh, and expertise of local government. Uh, as such, it was determined that a Retail Subproject Steering Committee uh, be formed uh, and that also involved the recommendation for the recruitment of an independent chairperson uh, for that uh, sub-project steering committee with uh, relevant experience and expertise in that field. <coughs> Off the back of that we went out um, to the market uh, and ran a recruitment process uh, and engaged the services of Mr James Hepburn, the, the chair of the uh, steering committee who is present uh, here today. Um, this effectively was the, the first uh, meeting that was held for that group uh, and was predominantly around getting an understanding of the function, scope and operation of that retail sub-project steering committee and how it reports into this standing committee. Uh, the minutes uh, in the interest of, of transparency uh, for the, the council and the community are attached 
um, to this report, uh, and that details what was discussed uh, at that particular meeting. Uh, the next uh, meeting uh, is scheduled in, uh, and I am aware uh, that the chair of this committee uh, is attending uh, that uh, meeting to observe and be fully informed of, of the retail uh, components of the project. Uh, in summary, um, it is uh, a bit of a, a, not a holding pattern, but similar to previous reports to Council with eight heads of agreement um, signed, still waiting obviously to proceed to an agreement for lease um, and uh, expecting hopefully that the anchor tenant uh, is achieved this month is the expectation. Um, one of the things that has been identified uh, in particular by uh, Mr Hepburn uh, was we are shifting into a different phase um, when it comes to those retail assets. Um, so we have, have constructed uh, obviously our civic space, our library, um, progressing with the administration building, um, hopefully about obviously to commence the construction of the retail assets and the redevelopment of them. Um, now we need to look at our actual operating model for those precincts. So it's one thing to award the contract to hunters and builders and get them to build it, um, but there is a lot of work that has to be done to look at Council's effective operating model uh, for that retail precinct in the event that, that a determination is made by the Council to hold those and operate those assets for a couple of years as per the, the KPMG report previously provided. Um, James is, is currently uh, conducting an assessment, if you will, of, of Council's various capabilities um, when it comes to the, the requirements of that uh, and we intend uh, fairly soon uh, going out uh, via a, a competitive recruitment uh, or procurement process, sorry, um, <clears throat> to look at engaging the services uh, of experts in this field to actually operate those precincts for us. The operating model um, is not determined as yet um, and a future paper uh, will be provided um, to this committee for council to consider as to what that operating model uh, might look like. Um, so that is the, the sort of process at the moment. Um, yet again, um, you know, highlighting the, the risks associated um, with the retail assets and I don't see the, the risk isn't in the construction of them, it's in the, the successful operation and activation of them. Um, that is very much so uh, the realm you know, of this sub-project steering committee to, to bring in the relevant expertise required to deliver that um, and to provide you know, um, expert advice to this committee and the council to consider in that regard. Um, <clears throat> we have a, a few risks associated um, with uh, this at the moment um, which are identified in the report. Um, one of those obviously uh, is mentioned refers to the resourcing um, is an ongoing challenge um, and that is more so around <coughs> understanding what is in fact going to be our operating and resourcing model for the precinct and then going through the recruitment processes as we need to or the procurement to actually uh, enable council to have those services and expertise available. Um, whether that is yet again internally run by council or it is independently run by a Knight Frank or one of those big organisations that run shopping centres, um, that is a determination that will be made by this council uh, following advice uh, you know, from uh, Mr Hepburn and other uh, consultants along the way. Uh, it is Time is becoming of the essence, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, in relation to this decision. Um, I would not say that we are late uh, when it comes to, to making the decision, but it is timely that now is when we really need to get um, not just the organisation's head around it, but the council and then the community around how that space will operate. Thank you, Mr Madigan. Um, I'm, I don't have any questions. I'm across this information, so... OK, thank you. Thank you. Can I ask somebody to move? Thank you, Councillor Johnny. Can I second it? Thank you, Councillor Milligan. Open for discussion. No further discussion. Should we put it to the vote? All those in favour, confirm we've had five in the affirmative. Motion is carried. Moving along to the uh, fourth and, and final um, item on the agenda. The Ipswich Central Redevelopment uh, Heritage, uh, it's information only report in relation to the conservation of the historical buildings and interpretation of the precinct's history in Ipswich Central Redevelopment. Call on the re relevant council officer, thank you.
Mind you state your name? Yes, thank you. Uh, Danielle Owen, Manager, City Design. Mm -hmm. uh, through the Chair, the purpose of this report today is to inform the committee on the measures taken to conserve the historic buildings and to interpret the history of the CBD in the Ipswich Central Redevelopment Project. A bit of historic context, uh, the historic core of the Ipswich CBD bounded by Brisbane, Ellenborough, East and Bremer Streets was substantially demolished for redevelopment in the mid-1980s. Uh, the 1875 railway station in the former Union Street had been <coughs> demolished earlier to this time. <coughs> the western section of Brisbane Street, top of town, was not redeveloped and has remained substantially intact. So the measures to conserve and inter interpret the history of the CBD in the redevelopment project essentially comprise three components. The first, um, council's heritage assets. Uh, the Ipswich Central Redevelopment Area includes a small number of heritage buildings, including the Commonwealth Hotel, owned by Ipswich City Council. The exterior of the Commonwealth Hotel is being conserved and reconstructed. Council also is in possession of six panels of cast balustrade and six cast iron staunchions from the Nicholas Street Rail Bridge. The second component um, is facade improvement program. So this program will assist owners to make some minor improvements to their facades and also um, provides the opportunity for the building owners to initiate contact uh, with Council's Heritage Program, which also includes a free Heritage Advisor service. The third component um, is historical rail interpretation. Uh, it, the rail infrastructure was an important element in the city centre prior to the, prior to the 1980s. Um, and in order to interpret the significance of rail to the city centre, it's proposed to install a piece of the iconic cast iron balustrade and cast iron staunchion from the Nicholas Street Rail Bridge, um, the design being currently finalised. The installation will also include still silhouettes of two fashionable women recreating a 1940 photograph taken at that same location, which I understand is, is an attachment to the report. The installation will also include historical information regarding the historic presence of rail in the city centre and the remaining cast items are to be securely stored for future appropriate use in the precinct. Future opportunities for historical interpretation of the historic city centre will also be explored as the redevelopment progresses. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Hey, Jeffy Mayor. Um, I know that there's discussion about that we see some type of a heritage assessment. Um, was, is this the report or is there another report with detail? Or is this uh, through the chair, I understood that uh, this is an information report right. on essentially the um, heritage matters um, and interpretation that was to occur as part of the okay. redevelopment project. Um, I'm not sure if you can elaborate as to what you were... I understood there was... Um, a significant report. A, signif a concept sort of, right. yeah. yeah. Um, I might have to refer that to That's Mr. Fine. Madigan at That's a, another time, or if he can answer. And I guess I'll just look at, at some of the things, such as the um, in the historical role interpretation with the, 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 the two ladies. Was that a decision by a council resolution, or how was that? Yes, um, through the chair. I personally haven't been involved in that. Uh, the officer uh, who has been is unfortunately okay. unwell today. So I'll have to take that on notice and uh, Find respond out. to you if I can. And, and yes. perhaps that could form part of yes. a, a, a more significant report that the, the we would like yes. to Certainly. see. Just Certainly. understand the, the, the heritage um, injection um, into the redevelopment and what role I, you guys have. And I guess I'm very keen to know what was looked at and assessed and where there's been a council resolution for a decision. Mm -hmm. And obviously, because there'll be many areas that us as a new council that yes. we'll, we'll wish to overlay, especially with feedback from, from the community mm -hmm. and, our, and our current programme at the moment for to going out to the community for naming things. So mm -hmm. I think it's really important to know um, just because council in the past may have done a report and recommended something, we need to know if it was a council resolution or not. Yeah. Through the chair, certainly so, we can provide that information. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Ms. Owen. That's all right. Thank you. Any further questions? No, thank you. Thank you. We might put this to the vote. I know Councillor Kunzelman has left the meeting at 12.40. We still Happy have... Happy to move it. You got a quorum? Quorum, yep. Just need a mover in a second. Mover.
Thank you, Mayor Harding. Seconder, thank you, Councillor Jonick. Any further discussion? Just, I'd really love to see that old holistic you know, of, of the, the heritage. And I know that you've, you've talked a lot about especially with Green and Lane and, and a few other things, just mm. to look at, um, look at it holistically, I guess. Absolutely. And whilst I'm excited about the rail, the balustrades, I was a little disappointed when I saw the concept design that there mm. would only be one panel. Yeah. I think we've missed some opportunities to really incorporate um, that. So let's yeah. seek some further information around their thinking and, yeah. and what's been done and, and whether it was subject to... Yeah. Resolution. We just over ten years ago, Deputy Mayor, I was involved when we were um, obviously decommissioning the F one eleven jets that we love here in Ipswich. Uh, we had a fleet of thirty nine jets, and it was a big decision as to how many would be preserved, mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. you know, to be looked after mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, around Australia, and, and one even went to Hawaii as well. Um, it was really hard. How do you pick your favourite child, you know, kind of thing. So yes. we actually did a heritage assessment on each of the jets and it was quite easy to work out then which 13 were then mm -hmm. preserved because there was that extra historical value or mm -hmm. the condition of the aircraft yes. for, for preservation. So mm -hmm. sometimes I've, my experience has been having a heritage assessment. A few things can shake out and mm -hmm. sort of under... And you sort of work out what's, I guess, cost-effective but also from a heritage perspective what's good for our city as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd hate to think certain um, ideas have been um, discounted or excluded um, for fear that it, it would mm. cost too much money when if they, you know, we could investigate a little further. Mm. So, um, I understand, I guess, if, if something doesn't proceed because it was too expensive, then there's an understanding why it didn't proceed. Mm. Okay, do we have any further discussion, comments? Um, I guess brings the meeting to an end. We've got to vote on it. We've got to vote on it, don't we? <laughs> all those, sorry, I'm getting too eager for lunch. Um, all those in favour, confirm that's five in the affirmative. Motion is carried. And that brings the Central Development Committee to an end at 12.44pm. Thank you. Thank you.